Are these the faces of white Americans? Hi, I'm Danielle Romero, and thank you so much for being with me again on my channel, where we've been digging into hidden history here in America and questions about American identity and belonging. And if you're new to this channel, you may be wondering, why is this girl making all these videos? I actually started this process a year ago where I started digging into my mom's grandmother. Her name was Lola and her hidden heritage from Louisiana. And we thought we were one thing. We turned out to be a whole bunch of other things. And there was a whole family history that had been kept from us. And I wanted to know why. And so in digging into that question of why for my family, it's kind of required that I dig into this landscape of identity here in America. We, we have been talking a lot about the legal terms of what white is legally, according to the Supreme Court, according to documents written by the Founding Fathers. But I want to look at this from another angle. And so I want you to picture a digital composite image, a mosaic of faces, each one representative of the typical white American. Picturing this in your mind, are there certain features that you imagine, certain hair colors, certain nose shapes, certain skin tones? I think we all kind of have an idea of what it means to be white, especially in America, where it seems to be almost a matter of taste or opinion, uh, which box somebody goes into. Is our idea really an accurate depiction of a white American. Well, there is a study done in conjunction with 23andMe's data and Harvard and a couple other agencies where they were looking at the data that people submitted through their DNA sample and how they identified and where these people lived and what the reality was of their genetic makeup. And I saw an interesting image that was kind of floating around the internet going along with that. So that was the picture that I shared on the thumbnail and I want to share it with you in here and I want to talk a little bit about it and I'll, we'll read through this first. So it says, a study by Harvard in 23 and me published in the American Journal of Human Genetics found that white Americans are on average 98.6% European, 0.19% African, not 19, but 0.19, like you're not even a fifth, and 0.18% American Indian. However, it was also found that 94% of white Americans have no African or American Indian DNA, um, and only 3.5% of white Americans have African ancestry and 2.7% have American Indian DNA. So most people who are walking around the United States um, identifying as white or see themselves that way, most of them do not have American Indian or African American DNA. But there's some really kind of crazy twists about uh, those especially who have African American DNA. And I'm going to show you that in a second. But first, I want to show you uh, the composition that went with this, and it was average white American phenotypes. So remember, a phenotype is how you look. Phenotypes don't always tell the full story, right? There are plenty of people who have traits that you might consider belong to one group over another, but sometimes that's not how DNA shakes out. According to this study, um, white Americans are predominantly of North and West European origin, which Based on the history we've been going through on the channel, this makes sense. The founding fathers, when they used the term white, they were, they were, it was self-referential. They were refer referring to themselves and the places of origin that they had come from. And so that's how they saw white. And it turns out that the DNA supports that. The 10 largest white American ancestries in the United States are, not surprisingly, one, they say British, 26%, but they're including Irish. And I think the Irish would have a bone to pick with that. Uh, let me know what you think about putting the British and Irish together. I've read places where it said that they're genetically almost identical, but uh, 23andMe knew that mine was Irish and it wasn't British and that matched our family history and my paper trail. So it did seem to be able to differentiate British from Irish. Um, the second predominant group, 13%, German. The third group they're calling American. Now they don't mean Native American, but there's a little asterisk at the bottom. 
and it's saying mostly British Isles. So I, I think that what they're doing here is they're kind of conflating American colonies, but I'm not totally sure, and I couldn't totally get a clear answer on that. Uh, number four is Italian, 6%. Um, the fifth highest group is French, 4%. So there's a huge drop-off once you go past British and Irish. Polish, 3%. Dutch, 1%. Um, eighth place is Norwegian at 1%, and then Swedish and Russian are also following up at 1%. So white Americans are predominantly of North and West European origin. If someone's identifying as, as a white American or, you know, what have you, um, most likely they're going to be about 26% British, which I thought was really interesting. And when we jump over to the phenotypes, this is wild to me. So this is basically taking averages, right? So it doesn't mean that this is what you see the most of, but it's kind of how it all came together and what got spit out at the other end when it was mixed up. So the average white American phenotypes, and so I thought it was really interesting to just kind of go through these faces and see do I see any that are familiar to me? Do I see any faces that I recognize, like people that you pass on the street, people you work with? Um, so I thought this was really cool. So I, I thought that it was interesting, especially uh, the bottom two on the right. I feel like those skew a little bit darker than what someone might say is, uh, is white. But that leads me to the next point here, which is that the data from 23andMe uh, showed that at least 1.4% of self-reported white Americans carry at least 2% African ancestry. If we raise the African ancestry threshold to just 1%, the percentage of white Americans who have this genetic marker jumps from 2 to 3.5% of white Americans now have, okay, one penny out of 100. They have 1% African DNA. But think about all the stories behind these numbers, and each one is capable of reshaping that composite image that is put out as a white American. Now, if we pull back further, a wider panorama of American genetic diversity comes into view. Now, most individuals who have less than 28% African ancestry, so about, you know, anybody who has about less than a quarter African ancestry, identify as European American or white American typically instead of African American. Now, obviously this is a personal choice, but this is just what 23andMe was noticing based on self-identification, self-reporting, and DNA results. So basically, as you're reading it, the left side of the graph shows people who identify as European and it's solid European. They're all European. On the right side of the graph, it's people who identify as African American and it is mostly all solid blue, but not all the way. And what's really interesting about this graph is you can see that there's a point kind of about a third of the way in where people are still identifying as European, but they have a sizable chunk of African ancestry. But then all of a sudden it makes a huge jump to being predominantly African-American ancestry. And I think this kind of goes to show what they were saying earlier, that there is a significant amount of people who do have hidden African ancestry the portrait of white America is, I feel like, a little bit more intricate and diverse than at first blush we would maybe guess. Are the composite images true reflection of white America, or is it just a fragment of a more complex narrative? Are these the faces of white Americans? For each video that we dive into this, these questions together, these questions of American identity and American history, it's just a pixel in this grand image of uncovering what does it mean to be white in America. So if you are ready to continue this journey and maybe you have questions about your own family story that you'd like to start delving into, I, I just created a masterclass called Be a Good Ancestor, which is all about learning how to save and preserve and share your own family story. It's a 40-page downloadable workbook and it includes five instructional videos to kind of sit down with you and go through the process together. So if you're interested in that, you can check out nytonashville.com and I'll leave a link below. Let's keep asking questions together and I'll see you soon.